Welkom, dames en heren, in de Permeke Bibliotheek. Um, welkom op deze auteurslezing die wij houden uh, in het kader van het basisjaar literair schrijven van creatief schrijven. Met dank ook aan Behouten Begeerte, want u bent niet alleen hier in de zaal. Dit wordt ook live gestreamd. Er zijn ook mensen die ons uh, via de computer volgen en meedenken. En ik, ik uh, heb begrepen dat een deel van u zelf creatieve of literaire ambities heeft... Uh, dat uh, kunnen we straks ook bespreken, want het programma bestaat uit twee uren. We hebben een eerste uur waarin ik met Maxime Osipov zal praten over zijn werk in het Engels. Dan hebben we een half uurtje pauze. Daarin kunt u uw vragen formuleren. formuleren. Er liggen kleine briefjes, formuliertjes op de tafels hiernaast in de bar, waarop u iets kunt noteren. En dan gaan we vervolgens nog een uur praten op basis van uw vragen. Uh, dus we hebben een uh, heel uh, uitgebreid programma. De mensen die online volgen kunnen dat in de chatbox doen van het YouTube-kanaal waarlangs u dit programma volgt. Um, we gaan praten met uh, de Russische auteur Maxim Osipov. Dabro Pajalovac. Merci. Uh, in Antwerpen. Welkom, welkom, Mr. Osipov in Antwerp. We will speak in English now. Uh, I made the introduction for the people in Dutch. Um, There is a possibility for the people to ask questions. We will do that in the second part of our conversation. Um, we will talk about your work, about your writing, about writing in general, um, uh, all the questions that people have uh, to ask you. Um, let's start here. Um, when I was, I was reading your book, which is uh, published in Dutch, uh, De Wereld is niet stuk te krijgen, uh, it in Netherlands. I was reading it in the train from Amsterdam to here, and I almost missed the station Antwerp because it's so it's so it's funny, it's sad, it's very it's it's really a very very good book. So, the fir my first question is: How is it possible that you are reading a book and you're in you're getting in another world, uh, and uh, and you 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 forget everything what is happening? This must be a good book. Is there a recipe for such a good book? Well, if I knew a recipe, I would probably write much more <laughs> books than yes. I did. Uh, so I have only two books uh, so far, and it takes me really a lot of time to write a story. I don't write books, actually. I write short stories, and then they form a collection of short stories and, and become books. Uh, so I don't know a recipe, so uh, otherwise, uh, you know, I would turn it into craft, mm. and it hadn't turned into craft yet, mm. uh, and will probably, in my case, will never uh, turn into craft. So that's, you know, uh, sort of a, a curse that you have to, you have to write, uh, but it's not, you know, it, it doesn't come easily, uh -huh. in my case. And you, you once said it's not the time for big novels, so you write, you're writing only short stories, that, which is more a, a, a genre from this uh, era, from this time. Yeah, I think so. And plus, short stories, well, it's a totally different thing. Uh, may, I'm not, maybe I don't have, uh, you know, a breath long enough to, for, for a novel or patience mm -hmm. uh, for, for a novel, or I do not understand the genre of a novel as much as I understand short stories. So it happened that in this form I found, you know, something for myself. Mm -hmm. Although these short stories are not that short. Some, mm -hmm. some of them last uh, up to three hours. I prefer to measure uh, the length of the short stories, not in number of words or symbols, uh, but, you know, in, in, in the time it it takes to read it, yeah, because yeah. different different texts needs different speed, yeah. you know, different tempo. Uh, so, uh, if I were brave enough, I would even put on the short stories a tempo like Allegro <laughs> or Moderato, you know, <laughs> like the music, like music. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like you compare music. you compare with music yeah, also yeah, in the writing. Yeah. Yeah. I think they are they can be comparable yeah. short stories with with the music sonatas in many ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not only in, in the tempos, uh, but only also uh, in the fact that when we are listening to a music for the first time, it's not that we are actually listening to it, 
uh, we are deciding whether it's worth listening yeah. again. And so with short stories, I, I already read some short stories, a, you know, uh, countless mm -hmm. um, uh, times, yes. uh, like Chekhov's or, you know, many other Salinger's, uh, you know. We not will necessarily Russians. Yeah. Uh, we will hear you reading also because you have a fragment. You have one, when, not a fragment, you have one yeah, yeah. Full short story. Yeah, a very read. short story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. Maybe let's start with your biography. You are a Russian writer, but mm -hmm. not longer living in Russia. We all know what is happening now in Europe, in the world, in Ukraine. Um, this terrible situation, this terrible war, which is very frightening. Mm -hmm. All of us and all the world. Um, you escaped from Russia. Um, what, what, is, wh what is happening, according to you? What, what is your biography? How did it start? Why did you decide to leave Russia? Well, I was, to tell the truth, I was always against immigration. Uh, we had several uh, waves of immigration in Russia. Uh, so I witnessed the third wave in the mid-70s, mm -hmm. where I was you know, a schoolboy. Uh, and the fourth wave, which happened, uh, you know, after USSR collapsed. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was the beginning of the 90s. Uh, so the third wave was mostly Jewish immigration to Israel or to America, but not necessarily Jewish. Mm -hmm. it, it was a mixture, of course. Uh, and the fourth immigration was you know, sometime for economical reasons and sometime for, uh, you know, professional reasons. Uh, I knew scientists who realized they have to uh, have to leave, otherwise they would not get the uh, get the uh, achievements they, they wanted to get. Mm -hmm. uh, but I myself was always against it. <laughs> and, uh, but this, happened very very quickly yes. really when the war began I haven't you know I, I didn't think about any immigration so on day one of the war which was 24th of February mm -hmm. this year uh, we went for a small demonstration in the center of a small town uh, where I lived and that was not you know dangerous or something uh, because the idea was, you know, through through internet, they said, let's at seven o'clock, let's gather on the main square of, you know, each city uh, where we are. Uh, but uh, in this small town, police knew us very well uh, because I was a doctor there, so they really didn't know how to react. So they disappeared. Actually, they mm. they did. Uh, and uh, so it was day one, and on day two, three. Before I was just following news. Uh, it was TV rain before it was closed. They worked. Rain, the, the, the uh, television the station. Yeah, the Washington. independent yes. independent uh, channel on on the uh, uh, on the YouTube, mm -hmm. mm, and then they closed it somehow, and they they made a search uh, and in, in their offices and and you know. Journalists left the country, I think. Well, they, they all left the country. Uh, and so on day five, I wrote a short essay. My Spanish publisher asked me to write a short essay on what's going on. So I called it very simply the fifth day of war. Mm -hmm. And it is translated into Dutch. Uh, if you know, there is any interest, you can find it in the one of the newspapers. I yes. forgot which one. And then, uh, you know, on day six, I, the, 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 the level of, you know, anger, uh, shame, disgust, uh, fear, you know, unwillingness to live in, in the fascist state mm. was so big that I just made a decision that we, we leave. Mm. So me, my wife, my son, and his family, you know, we, we lived close to each other in this, mm -hmm. in two houses, you know, like 200 meters from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went to Yerevan first. Armenia. Yeah, to Armenia. Uh, my son didn't have a uh, Schengen visa, so he had to spend very long five months there. 
and me and my wife, we went to Germany, where my daughter lives, uh, and her family. She's a musician, and she lives there since 2014. Mm -hmm. She plays in string quartet and very well settled there. And so, you know, after that, I went to Berlin for three months. I was invited uh, in the wonderful place, uh, which is called Wissenschaftskolleg zu Berlin. Mm -hmm. And then I was invited to Leiden University to teach Russian literature at Leiden University in English language. Mm -hmm. So uh, what a turn of <laughs> biography. <laughs> but, you know, and I have a beautiful place to stay in Amsterdam. So now you're based it would in be Amsterdam. a sin. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm based in Amsterdam and I travel to Leiden. So yeah. it's a sin to complain, really. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but it's terrible because you don't know when and if you, you ever can go back to Russia. Mm, yeah, well, to tell the truth, I don't think I will ever uh, live in Russia. I will never return to Russia. Of course, I miss. Uh, many things there. Uh, my friends, mm -hmm. well, some of them left already. Uh, I miss uh, I miss my doctoral work, but you know it's time to 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 quit. And I miss, of course, graves of my parents. I miss my house. Mm, well, there are there are things that I miss, uh, but uh, and I would love to go and visit. Etc. But I don't think Russia will ever become um, a place uh, for me to live. Really, I'm I'm very very sad to mm -hmm. say about that. But you know, uh, it seems I, I I taught Babel uh, yesterday to my uh, Leiden students. Isaac Babel. Isaac yeah. Babel, uh, who was <coughs> you know stories written hundred years ago, and there were. Many of his uh, characters are people from Cheka, which is secret police, and uh, gangsters. Mm -hmm. And so these two forces, mm -hmm. I mean, these days, secret police took over everybody in, in Russia. Full power belongs to secret police. And uh, as soon as it you know, weakens, uh, and it will weaken, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, criminal forces will, will just, you know, criminals will, uh, will take over. Mm -hmm. And there are no other forces. I, I, when I'm, you know, there are, of course, nice people, but mm -hmm. it's not like, say, in Poland in the beginning of 80s where there were trade unions, there was very strong Catholic mm -hmm. church who supported them. Uh, nothing like that. So only those two, and it's 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 sad, but it's how how it is. So you are very pessimistic about uh, the future. Well, yes, I'm 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 quite quite sad. I would say, yeah, I'm 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 quite pessimistic. Yeah, that would be a good definition. Fortunately, you have a lot of humor to 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 write about it because your stories are very hilarious sometimes. Uh, but let's say because you mentioned one important thing that you worked as a, as a doctor, you are a cardiologist, mm -hmm. um, and that's your profession, that was your profession, mm -hmm. now not anymore, as I can understand. Mm -hmm. um, so you, were, you were a cardiologist in Russia, and you, you started writing very late. You were, I think, 45, 46? 43, yeah. yeah. Well, well, actually, uh, I started, I, I, I say that, I tend to say that officially, uh, I would say it was uh, 2005, so I was 42. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, I published the, f the first uh, thing, uh, the first piece in 2007. So let's say 2007 was the uh, beginning. So it means that, you, that before that time you didn't write, or did you? Well, I, 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 I kept diary, uh, mm -hmm. which is quite big mm -hmm. now. And it's not that I, it's more like thoughts or ideas or some s very small sketches. But not stories, whatever. not full stories. Not, no. not full stories, no. Right. And well, but uh, I would, I always say that uh, and, and some people do not 
even believe me that I, I, I am convinced that uh, the uh, actually the the process of, of writing uh, must be preceded with feeling yourself a writer. Mm -hmm. So I felt myself a writer mm -hmm. since mid nineties. Okay. Uh, and I even found a, a note in my diary. Uh, that I am a doctor. I was a publisher at the time. I, I did medical books. Okay. And I said, uh, well, now I am a doctor who is not uh, taking care, uh, is not treating anyone, and a writer who didn't write anything. <laughs> so that was, yeah. you know, yeah. the feeling. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, being a doctor, being a uh, uh, you know, respectful person, whatever, yes. <laughs> uh, is one thing. And to be a beginner, uh, you know, writer, uh -huh. is totally different thing. Yeah. So, you know, there was a fear, I guess, or not a fear, but some kind of, you know, feeling at e uneasy uh -huh. about that. And uh, plus, you know, I was busy with other things. Yeah. You started writing and publishing at the, at the age when Anton Chekhov was already <laughs> died. died. Yeah, yes, exactly. He was 40 or 40, beginning of the 40s. He was 44. 44, yeah. and mm -hmm. he was. There is a. Mm -hmm. People compare, of course, although it's not, not always, always true, but they compare with Chekhov because he was also a doctor and a writer. Yeah, you can imagine how, how often do I, yes. do I hear <laughs> that. Well, there are. There are uh, if you look at the, if you Google, especially in Russian, uh, second Chekhov, Taroy Chekhov, you will find like five or six or even more <laughs> people yes. like that. So I even had an idea to make a conference of all the second <laughs> Chekhovs <laughs> and to think what we second Chekhovs <laughs> think about this and that. Also, I made a joke that, uh, you know, in Russia, uh, it's like in America, very often uh, they name streets like First Park Street, Second Park Street, you know, Twenty Second Park Street. So I said, if someone would name street after me, they would call it Second Chekhov Street. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so you can imagine how yes. often I <laughs> heard that. Of course, there are some similarities. He's, he wrote also short stories. Mm -hmm. Uh, he wrote also hilarious stories. The sadness is also, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the themes are sometimes uh, the same. Um, the characters, the portraits that he make, made, made of people. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are some similarities. He wrote also for theater. You mm -hmm. wrote also for theater. So these are the similarities, but you are, of course, completely different. What, when you started really writing as a writer and publishing, who were your heroes? at that moment in Russian literature. Did, did you have some examples? Mm, no, not really, yeah. no. No, well, I, I, of course, there are certain things that I admire in many uh, authors, like uh, in Dostoevsky, I admire the fact that even very negative characters say reasonable things all the time. <laughs> so I try, yes. uh, you know, to make that even negative characters yeah. Yeah. Say reasonable things. Yeah. I think it's and you know the because it's nice to to leave some freedom for a reader and to to make him or her uh, make their part of work. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's why I think uh, publishers do not like uh, collections of short stories because they say they do not sell well. Uh, because it requires, they require much more work from the readers okay. than the novel. Because when you read short story, if you miss something, uh, then you can miss the whole point. Uh -huh. I mean, in the novel, you can skip, you know, this <laughs> and that. And, yeah. Well, mainly, it, it's hard to imagine that you read uh, War and Peace and uh, would not figure out, you know, who Dolokhov uh, is or who, uh, what kind of character Natasha was or whatever. Uh -huh. But uh, in a short story, even few, you know, few words can change the whole thing. Yes, so especially in your short stories, because you jump sometimes very quick from mm -hmm. one situation to another in dialogues also. Mm -hmm. And you have to be very, very, very read very carefully, because otherwise yeah, yeah. you miss, you miss the, the, the points. Yeah. How, do you, how do you construct it? You, you, do, you don't write fast, you write carefully and slowly? Well, I write, well, 
normally I start to write a short story when it is, say, 30%, 50% ready in my uh, mind, you know, in my head. Yeah. So sometime, well, it can start with, uh, with the title or it can start with some, uh, you know, some episode. Uh, people, very often people say, oh, that's a great story. I will, let me tell you something. Uh, you are a writer. You need to put it down. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it will make you famous and rich and you know whatever <laughs> every writer heard this kind of uh, you know suggestions yes. and they tell in fact the anecdote yeah. the like you know the, uh, that and that and now you can laugh now you can you know whatever cry but it's you know and I always say well you already did it <laughs> the short story is ready it's I mean, already here there. it is yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because you know you should not mix you know an anecdote with uh, with uh, some nucleus of the mm -hmm. of the story that that can self develop mm -hmm. you know so self development i love this uh, definition of uh, arts in general uh, given by a very dear friend of mine late friend of mine who was a priest uh, and uh, my teacher and patient and you know very good friend uh, he said that arts is a self-development of truth, uh, and uh, you know, I I really think uh, it it can be applied to every every kind of art. Mm -hmm. So let me give you uh, the uh, example how uh, there is a story in this book, a Polish friend, mm -hmm. and uh, it happened to my daughter that when she visited her friend who lived in who is Russian and who lived in Germany and who now became uh, her husband, mm -hmm. uh, also a musician. Uh, she went from Russia to Frankfurt um, by airplane. And uh, in the airport, she was asked, uh, you know, what, are you, what is the purpose of your visit, standard you know, thing? And she said, well, I am visiting my friend. And uh, the, the, the officer said, but why do you have Polish visa? Because she had Polish visa, it was the easiest and the cheapest probably uh, thing to get, uh, although she never been in Poland by that time, so, but it was easier to get Schengen, Schengen visa from Poland. And she thought for, for a second and said, well, in Poland, I have friend too, she said. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he laughed and let, yes. her, let her in. And then I thought, well, maybe this Polish friend can become, you know, a character yeah, yeah. Uh, that would help this girl uh, in the future. And then I observed and I put into my diary some notes about my daughter's teacher, who was a very famous professor of violin in Moscow Conservatory. And so it's a story not about my, my daughter, but about her teacher, actually, yeah. how the girl becomes you know, the 80-year-old uh, uh, single, uh, you know, yeah. uh, professional, whatever. But so I'm just giving examples of, you know. Yeah, but what you are doing now, are you, you, do, you do it also in the story, because you tell, I think it's in this story that you say you cannot start a story with a joke. Yeah, yeah. You yeah have with to start, an anecdote. Yeah. You have to start with, with this, because, and then you say you have to do Because an anecdote like this. is yeah. just limited yeah. thing. It's but you write yeah. it, you, you, you yeah, say yeah. it like that. Yeah, yeah. So you give instructions yeah, on how to write. Yeah, that's why I actually yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> recall that. And then you say, well, you do it. You have to do it like mm. this, yeah, and then the story starts. So sometimes it starts with a character, sometimes well, rarely with a character, because character should grow out of the story, really. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, then this is a real victory. Because we live with characters, we don't live with stories, right? Uh -huh. uh, I always uh, say that we live with uh, those whom we know, uh, those, you know, some of, you know, those whom we knew, you know, who died, but who are still you know, we have mm -hmm. some kind of dialogue with them, like with my parents, or, or and with literature characters, mm -hmm. actually, because they accompany, you know, characters from War and Peace accompany mm -hmm. me all my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, my attitude mm -hmm. toward them changes. Mm -hmm. And I even sometimes feel I need to protect them. Yeah. Because recently I had, uh, you know, I also, 
you know, love to give this example. I had a new, some acquaintances who said just ugly things about Prince Andrei. And I was like saying, uh, I mean, if they said he was a nerd or he was too, whatever, pedantic or he was too uh, obedient to his father, whatever, then we can, could discuss, but they said like, he was a moron or you know, some, some just offensive mm. things. And I said, look, I know you for like three months. Mm. And Prince Andre I knew since I was 12 year old boy. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I don't feel it. We, we had a serious quarrel. I, I was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think, uh, who else? Uh, <clears throat> and char literature characters, maybe some historical figures. I don't know, I am not that much into into history, uh, but I don't have dialogues with Lenin or... <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you, you, you write in, in a story, story, you know, sitting in a train and mm -hmm. all kind of things happen. Um, and I is this happening to you? You're sitting in a train, you see people, you, see ca you make characters, or, you, you, or, is it, or, or is it just uh, coming from a fantasy? Or well, it, 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 it depends. I mean, I, like many other people, I love comfort. You know, so when I travel in a comfortable conditions, you know, nothing happens actually. <laughs> but when I find myself in a bad conditions, then I say to myself, maybe that could be somehow yeah. useful yeah. too, <laughs> right? Uh, because yeah. yeah, I had some funny, yeah. uh, funny, uh, and you know, sad situations. Yeah. Uh, because you know, when when you are traveling, you are you are more uh, open to, mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 to many, to evil and yeah. to, you know, things, and yeah. you are less protected. So. And sometimes you don't know that evil yeah. is sitting next to yeah. you, yeah. Yeah. like in one of the stories. Yeah. 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 Um, you have a story with you, which you will read, uh, a short, a very short story, not very, very short, <laughs> but... I yeah, that's the, yeah, the, the, the reason why I picked it up. Uh, there are two reasons, actually. Yeah, we have uh, a translation in Dutch. You will read in yeah, Russian. Yeah, yeah, I will read in Russian. Uh, I never read in English because I want to avoid uh, comic uh, effects uh, from <laughs> <laughs> no, from the accent, you know. Uh, anyway, but um, uh, so the the title is uh, "Big Opportunities," and uh, this is the, the the very unusual story for me because I wrote it in two days. And it was uh, based, you know, in, in Russian. For some reason, you will see it. Uh, uh, the translator um, didn't make it the, 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 the whole paragraph. I mean, there are many paragraphs there. In Russian story, there are only three paragraphs, <laughs> uh, but very long. <laughs> yes. uh, and I'm supposed to read, I mean, this is a story uh, with tempo, you know, allegro. <laughs> I would say, or at least, yeah. you know, Allegret or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is based on the, I, w I will later on, I will tell, uh, I will tell what is it based on. So, большие uh, возможности. Let's, let's go ahead. Вообразите себе возможности. Скоро у него будут большие, практически неограниченные возможности. Он настаивал именно на возможностях, которые перед ним откроются непременно, причем в самые ближайшие времена. «Пусть она имеет в виду, — говорил он, — что у него все хорошо и теперь, прямо отлично, много лучше, во всяком случае, чем она может себе представить. Она, разумеется, никак не представляла себе ни теперешних его возможностей, ни тем более тех, на которые он намекал. Ей всего-то надо было от него, чтобы довез поскорей. Сейчас и не вспомнишь, куда — в редакцию, в гости, в театр». Ей что же, выходит неинтересно послушать, кто он такой? О, она, кажется, знает, но не станет произносить. Еще один приставучий болтливый водитель, Гордончик. Одно из нескольких слов по-армянски, жаргонных, которым ее научили друзья. Гордончик, несмотря на проблемы с гласными, куда благозвучнее и ласковее, чем бомбила по-нашему, хотя означает ровно то самое. Это Москва, каждый второй автомобиль тут такси. Только поднимешь руку и... «Сколько? А сколько дашь?» «Нет, он не бомбила. Этот все продолжает бубнить. И машина, на которой они сейчас едут, она не его собственная, а служебная. У него самого имеется совершенно другая тачка, другой, как он выразился, аппарат. 
Но он не собирается его на наших колдобинах убивать. А подобрал он ее не потому, что нуждается в деньгах с ударением на первый слог, очень по-местечковому, хотя уж кем-кем, а евреем он быть не мог. Но и на русского не похож. Коми, Чуваш, Удмурт, маленький, но с громадными, по его словам, возможностями впереди. Быстрый, дробный такой говорок, и быстрая, но аккуратная в целом манера вождения. Лицо хоть и не безобразное, но и не выражающее ничего. Ему, продолжает он, полагается личный водитель, однако он предпочитает все делать самостоятельно. Уж не ради таких ли вот встреч? Впрочем, ей-то какое дело. Остановите вон там, так она пообедать, поужинать, вместе покушать. О, Господи, в зеркало давно смотрел на себя. Нет-нет, зачем обижать? Да и его ухаживание, так это назовем, было не наглым, а каким-то наивным, автоматическим, глупым до чрезвычайности. Не удаль, не ум, не талант, а большие возможности. Вот чем он пытался ее соблазнить, привлечь. Из человеческого, пожалуй, что только дефект речи. Детский какой-то. Он смешно выговаривал букву «Ш». Попробовала оставить ему то ли 200 рублей, то ли 20 тысяч. Она совершенно не помнит, какие суммы были тогда в ходу. Отказался. Сунул ей карточку с личным номером. Сказал, он этот номер вообще никому не дает. Никогда. Почти. Так что, если она передумает, о, непременно. Мерси. Победы, подобные этой, не приносят и тени радости. И она никогда бы не вспомнила низкорослого гордончика. Мало ли кто волочился за ней до и после. Хотя так нелепо, как он, мало кто. Если бы не случай, не происшествие, сильнейшим образом изменившая жизнь. Утром рано пришли. Шестеро и собака. Восемнадцатилетнюю дочь ее посадили в машину и увезли, а квартиру перевернули вверх дном, хотя у них шел ремонт и казалось сильнее переворачивать некуда. Выяснилось, что есть еще как. Страх за дочь, ощущение того, что все происходит не с ними, не с ней, стыд от свальных в кучу белья, старых писем, фотографий родных и чувство, что надо бороться, конечно, звать адвокатов, говорить гадости этим жлобам, но жизнь, в общем, кончилась. Что вы ищете, господа? Какие они, черты и господа? Граждане, на каком основании производится обыск в моей квартире? На основании ордера. Вот. Экстремизм, терроризм, анархизм, записи в сети интернет. Когда надо будет, я и объяснят. Только собака вела себя более или менее пристойно. Походила, понюхала и улеглась безучастно. Она дала собаке воды. «Это что?» – спрашивает ее старший, и впервые в его голосе слышится интерес. Профессионал обнаружил в старой сумке <coughs> на антресолик взорванной подкладкой карточку. Имя, фамилия, номер, ту самую. «Дайте сюда!» – она выхватывает карточку из рук старшего, и, не дав себе времени сообразить, что именно хочет сказать, звонит. «Слушаю с характерным ша». Разговор длится едва ли минуту-две, да и говорит-то она одна – слезы, клятвы, мольба – не время стесняться. Он, наконец, произносит все тем же бесстрастным тоном, которым рассказывал ей про возможности. Передайте трубку старшему. Тот выходит, потом возвращается. Значит так, закроем ее надолго, если до вторника не выйдет из страны. По номеру этому никогда не звоните. Поняли? Усмехается. Идите в отделение, забирайте свое сокровище. Цезарь, за мной. Ушли. Жизнь от имела смысл. Надпись, сделанная на заборе. Автор надписи неизвестен. Часто хорошая, самая лучшая. Автор не имеет. Как частушка, пословица, анекдот. I think we missed some... Yeah, can you, can you turn one more? Yeah, but you didn't read the previous. Yeah, so come back, come back. Back. One page back. Okay. Where are we? Uh, I think it's the next one, but next one. Next one. Okay, next one. What is? Ah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. Just read that, and as soon as you're <laughs> done, we are we are continuing. I think I I, I missed.
No? Окей, let's go. Окей. И теперь, спустя сколько-то лет, немало, потому что дочь ее за это время закончила университет в Лиле, московские подруги и друзья дочери, такие же, в общем, девочки и мальчики из хороших семей, успели отсидеть в тюрьмах и лагерях, кто весь срок, а кто часть его, им дали от 7 до 12. И сама она после многочисленных приключений и переездов оказалась в собственном доме на юге Франции. И, конечно, все эти годы она краем глаза, боковым зрением, Следит за карьерой своего, необходимо признать, благодетеля. Водила бомбила, гордончика, следит с ужасом. Поскольку то там, то сям, в Африке, Азии, а то и на родине, он непременно оказывается в центре какого-то немыслимого, непредставимого зла с нарушением всех божеских и человеческих правил. Пока, наконец, на глаза и не попадается сообщение о том, что его наградили звездой, ордером, во второй же раз, но теперь, однако, посмертно что, пытаясь спасти экипаж и так далее, малоправдоподобная чушь без попытки поместить в нее истинные подробности. Впрочем, им и не место тут. Он погиб смертью храбрых, и с ним еще столько-то человек. И ей, как и всем комментаторам, совершенно ясно, что вся эта официальная болтовня должна только скрыть, утопить в себе то позорное, гадкое, что случилось на самом деле. Пьяную смерть на охоте, политическое убийство или что-нибудь в том же роде. Как странно, думает она, подкрашенный, припудренный. Он лежит теперь со своими огромными, неограниченными возможностями в дорогущем гробу и ждет, когда под прекрасную музыку, которую вряд ли любил, его похоронят на самом, что ни на есть лучшем кладбище, рядом с писателями, артистами и композиторами. А хотела ли бы она, чтобы сообщение о самой гибели его оказалось сложным? Нет, такой вопрос себе лучше не задавать. Ей-то он сделал. Только хорошее, тогда как всем остальным, только плохое, судя по тому, какую про него пишут и говорят жуть. Хорошо. Жалко ли ей этого маленького человека с детским дефектом речи? Она ведь ему обязана пусть не жизнью, но очень и очень многим. Свободой дочери, этим вот югом Франции. Может и жалко. Чуть-чуть. Yeah, sorry for technical. Yeah, it was my fault. Yeah. Okay. You wanted to add something? How did this, how does this story begin? What is the origin of this story? Well, the origin of, of the story is that a friend of mine, you know, a nice, a very nice lady, a uh, very good friend, uh, a physician, uh, she told me that in the mid '90s. Uh, she had this kind of, you know, sudden, uh, the person who tried to seduce her mm -hmm. in the car, and that since she was not really much, no, she, she, she was interested in politics, but like many others, she never watched, watched TV or anything. Uh, uh, in, in September of 2021, uh, just occasionally watching TV in maybe, I don't know, uh, hair, hair cutter saloon or something. Uh, she found that this man who, who, who did this you know, uh, seduction, you know, this kind of you know, talking about big opportunities, uh, was Shaigu, a minister of uh, defense, yes. a present minister, <laughs> because she had a very remarkable speech defect. He is saying, instead, in Russian we say R, you know, uh, for R. And he said R, you know, <laughs> like, like, in, like it was, you know, in, in English. Yes. Uh, so it was so remarkable yeah. that she looked at him and she recognized this man. And she told it to me. And so I decided to put it down, uh, you know, in my diary that, you know, and this is really stupid and funny, this big opportunities, big opportunities, limitless opportunities, you know, the way to seduce yeah. Yeah. that soon he will have a limitless opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, just repeating that, you know, a small man with this great opportunities ahead of him, yeah. And then, uh, you know, the rest, then I came up with the rest, actually. So yeah. the rest was just a yeah. fantasy. Yeah. And there were, of course, there were some trials against young people and, and formed, you know, uh, with full, 
false accusation, uh, and there were some young people around, not around, I mean, in the news that were you know, accused of you know, terrorism, whatever, these groups. Uh, so that also inspired me. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, what would happen if, you know, and then it's, mm -hmm. but it's funny that it's, mm -hmm. you know, Shaigu, who, who is now yes. very well known to everyone. <laughs> He was right. He had yeah. very big opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> Does it often happen that you uh, you have a, s a story with pol political uh, political context, also political uh, references? Because in one in one story you mention the you mention Putin. No, you say a, yeah, a, yeah, well, a small man. Putin is a, mentioned in yeah. many stories. Yeah. I never named him. Yeah. You don't, you don't know your name, his name, that, that's yeah, what I mean. You but, don't say but it was quite clear yeah, who, who, yeah, who, yeah. Who, who it was, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, in one of the stories, Herzen uh, Guten uh, uh, mentioned in, in German, so good people, I, I think. Yes. It's, uh, they are waiting for, you know, and it is not clear, was it Putin yeah, or Medvedev, yeah. because they were very short, because yeah. uh, yeah. they asked to make a picture well, and it was based on the fact that Medvedev asked when he visited cardiology center yeah. in Moscow yeah. uh, for group picture, he asked to bring doctors who are uh, shorter than 170 centimeters. That was... <laughs> 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 this is very pathetic, I think. <laughs> 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 He's 162 centimeters <laughs> himself. So he didn't want to make picture with academics or whoever. <laughs> the only condition was, you know, they should be short. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't come to, to, to the Netherlands, I, I, I believe, because it's <laughs> most of my students are, are taller than <laughs> <Yes>. me, <laughs> even girls. Yes. And, you know, I, I never considered myself to be really short. Yes. You know, here I feel like <laughs> I'm a small man. <laughs> yeah. There are more stories in which you don't mention the names of the ca characters. There mm -hmm. are sometimes you say it's it's a girl, it's a teacher, <laughs> it's a Polish friend, it's but not not the names. Yeah, that's true. I have difficulties. Well, and plus, when you do not name uh, the person, it then it becomes more universal mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, right, because it then it, it's not Natasha or Lena yeah, or, yeah. but just every girl, yeah. <laughs> or you know. So well, and and to to give a name, it's 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 a big thing to yeah. to do. I think it's more universal than it can be anyone. It can be any person yeah. you meet. Or yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you write, sometimes I think when you write in the as as I, mm -hmm. the t the storyteller is 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 me is I. It looks like that rarely uh, happens. Right. Well, well it happened, but maybe Moscow Petrosa was. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's what I mean. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you. Uh, yeah. No, 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 okay. no, <laughs> no, no. I'm not that uh, naive. I would say, yeah. but, but, but some of you well, say it's a doctor and. Yeah, uh, yeah, but not necessarily me. No, okay. No. Well, no. I found that in the essays, when you say, uh, when you when you want to be unsentimental and the subject uh, is, uh, you know, tend to be, make you, tend to make you sentimental, like I have a story dedicated to the memory of my parents. Uh -huh. I said you instead of uh -huh. I. Uh -huh. So like you are coming there, you are doing that. Yeah. And uh, I noticed that in some poems uh, in Russian literature, at least, uh, you know, poets did did it the same way. It yes. makes it less. They don't use I because that's too yeah. much too personal. Yeah, it's to too much too personal, and you know, just you know, uh, have sympathy to me. I mean, it, it's it's really when when the the subject is moving yes. you know, somehow. Uh, so I try to avoid to be uh -huh. sentimental. Yeah. One of the most important aspects is the humor. There's a lot of humor in your stories. Mm -hmm. it's, f it's often very, very funny. The dialogues are funny. Mm -hmm. But that in at the same time, they, are, they have something melancholic, not sentimental, mm -hmm. but there is something, something heavy, something mm -hmm. 
can I say something Russian? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. And, uh, and sometimes you, you have this question, how to live, how to, how to live this life, how to be a human mm -hmm. being. That's mm -hmm. one of the, the most important questions that I feel in your stories, mm -hmm. as a basic idea. Yeah, well, it's a statement, it's not yeah. a question. Yeah, I agree. You say, in a certain story you tell about, you say, mm -hmm. or, or I've read somewhere that you say, why, why a singer is, uh, before the, the show starts, is, mm -hmm. is very nervous. Always, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. but a doctor before the surgery is not nervous, and but the doctor is is deciding about life and death, and the yeah. singer is just singing. And you say, but the singer had, does something much more important, because it's it's about the meaning of life. Well, not it's not that it's more important, but it's more like more existential. I yes. would say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a pilot in the in the uh, of the of the. Uh, aircraft, you would be really uh, <laughs> sad to see uh, you know, a pilot being nervous before yes. the flight, right? uh, or a surgeon before uh. operation, uh, because it's more like craft. And here you are on the, uh, yeah, it's it's one of the stories. Yeah, yeah in yeah. Lora, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's from Renaissance man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is one of the themes of your. Well, work. but it's not me at the same time who gave the answer, but. But uh, but one of my characters. Yeah. But I yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 I think there will be some questions in the second part about mm -hmm. the style, how you are writing. We have mm -hmm. that. That's what. That's sure. what. Well, it's good that we had an example of your, mm -hmm. of one of the stories. Uh, your style. It's difficult to describe. That's. Uh, but you often use very short sentences. Uh, your short sometimes uses internal dialogues. You talk mm -hmm. with yourself. You say something to yourself. You correct yourself. You, mm -hmm. you you suggest something. It's it's all kind of levels of very small talk, but to make all together make a big story. Well, I yeah, and I try to. Uh, there is a uh, you know sometimes we do not say something, but mm -hmm. it we mean something. Yeah. But it so it's the 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 borders between something that was said or, or was meant. They are very, yeah. uh, you know, unstable. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, Russian language is unique because you can use a lot of ellipses, so you can omit uh, some parts of the of the sentence, and grammatically, uh -huh. it it will still work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in in translation, That's difficult. Uh, it's difficult yeah. because uh, I have a story. Uh, about, uh, you know, it's uh, the children of John Coy. It's in the second book, The Last Story. And it's, uh, it's an essay. It's mm -hmm. uh, non-fictional. Uh, so it's uh, dedicated to the city of N, the, the city, the town uh, where I live, town of N. And uh, also, you know, it's, it's very funny in the beginning. And then uh, there is another view on, on this town after my mother's death. Mm -hmm. And I managed to write it without even saying I, you, uh, you know, mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. And it doesn't look, I think, artificial yeah. or, uh, you know, some kind of experimental yeah. prose or something. It's, it's normal. So Russian language is. You can do in that this. in Russian, but not in another mm -hmm. language. Yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah. not in most yeah, languages. Not in English. Yes, yeah. not in English, yeah. Yeah. not yeah. in Dutch either. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so Russian language is, is, is very, very good in this. Uh, in this. Th that's why it's so good for poetry. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Do you write poetry? No, I don't. No. <laughs> 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 Do you, <coughs> can you consider your language as your, your country? Is that the place where you, in w where you live? Because you are living in, in several places, you are traveling a lot, <coughs> you're escaping from danger, you're, you, you yeah. know that you will never go back to Russia, probably. Mm -hmm. Is the language your, lang your country? Yes, yes, of course, I would never know any uh, language. You would ne not, uh, not write in another language? No, no, of course not. Like Nabokov did, or Joseph Brodsky? Well, or, uh, well, yeah, Nabokov was a, a good example. Uh. Mm. Brodsky wrote some essays uh. in, in English, but his essays is not the best thing uh -huh. that he, he wrote. You, you cannot really consider uh -huh. him uh -huh. bilingual. Uh -huh. 
so there are some writers, but it's it's exceptional, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, Conrad, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, very few. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I know, I really know only one language, mm -hmm. and uh, it is Russian language, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the first part of our uh, conversation. Oh. The time is yeah, very, it was very fast. So yes. Thank you very much. It <laughs> thank was you. Very, we it will was see a each other pleasure. in half an hour yeah. again because okay. we were sitting here. We have now half an hour. Uh, I will switch to Dutch now. Uh, sure. That's okay. Als dat voor u goed is, dan zeg ik, voeg ik je nog een paar woordjes toe in het Nederlands. Wie dat, kan, wie dat wil, kan een vraag stellen um, um, over wat dan ook, hè, over wat u maar wilt vragen. Aan, uh, aan, aan deze auteur. Er liggen papiertjes op de tafeltjes daar, dat kan u opschrijven. U kunt het online ook doen via het, kanaal, het YouTube-kanaal. En dan uh, verzamelen wij al die vragen. Ik krijg die dan in een geconcentreerde vorm op papier bij me. En dan gaan we die in het tweede uur, dus over een half uurtje, gaan we die hier bespreken. Zo, so, dat is de procedure. Oké, okay. dank voor uw aandacht en tot straks. Zo, dames en heren, hier zijn we weer. We gaan uh, uw vragen die u hebt gesteld, ofwel live hier in de bar, ofwel online via het uh, YouTube-kanaal, gaan we behandelen. We hebben ze een beetje gegroepeerd, want natuurlijk zijn er vragen die rond, soms rond hetzelfde thema draaien. Um, there are a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, maybe the, the first question is, is predictable. What, what, what is, it's normal, it's a good question. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a basic question. Uh, what is your advice to beginning writers? <laughs> well, I, I really, uh, I have no advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's uh, there is there is. I mean, it's too general. I think the, this question. Uh, uh, I d and I don't think they really need my advices, and they would not follow my advices uh -huh. anyway. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, I, I never give advices. My experience but is that every writer gives another advice, or every every everybody needs another advice because everybody is different. And yeah, well, once I gave uh, advices that tried to write more about subjects and not about feelings mm -hmm. because feelings are very similar. Mm -hmm. But my, I myself write a lot about feelings, so, <laughs> uh, so it's contradictory. You don't follow your own advice. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but you know, I try to write about subjects more because subject is more interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and feelings are, yeah, similar in different people. But it's uh, no, that's that's not something I I'm strong in. Maybe the, best giving answer advices. Is, yeah. maybe the best answer is don't follow advices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't follow advices. <laughs> Do <yeah>. the opposite. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as you feel, uh, as long, because, you know, there is, of course, always a question, why do we write? Uh, after Tolstoy, after Shakespeare, after, uh, you know, and still, if you ask people in the audience how many people read Haji Murat, which is a mm -hmm. masterpiece of masterpieces, mm -hmm. and of Tolstoy, Tolstoy yeah. you will figure out that not too many of them, or many of my students didn't read New Testament, for example, mm -hmm. and I always feel ashamed, like people are reading me, and they <laughs> even didn't read New Testament. <laughs> Uh, so the question is, why, why do we write at all? Uh, it's not that uh, there is a lack of reading uh, in the world, uh, but it's uh, sort of a, you know, debt, a very strange debt, because debt to whom? Mm -hmm. to, to the readers, no, there is no such thing. Uh, and I, I myself do not think about readers when I uh, write. Uh, well, I read about imaginary reader who is, in fact, me, myself. Mm -hmm. So what, as a reader, I would like to, to read. Um, but uh, at the same time, it's, it's, it's really difficult to answer this question. But I always, uh, it makes, you know, it somehow consoles me. The fact that a friend of mine said very nicely that as long as you are when you are digging for gold, somebody, you know, like Tolstoy, uh, were lucky to find the big pieces of you know, gold. <laughs> and some just find, 
uh, a sand, you know, mm -hmm. a golden sand. But yeah. as long as the chemical element mm -hmm. is the same, is uh, it gold? It worth, uh, it worth doing that. It's gold. Yeah. 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 So you can you can do small things, mm -hmm. but as long as they are good, uh, in your opinion, you know, uh, it it's worth digging. Who is your first reader? Uh, well, there is a group of people whom I sent my my stories. Uh, yeah, well, I know. And so what do you expect uh, from these me? These names would, would, would no, no, tell you nothing. No, no, but is it your wife? Is it your friend? Is it your publisher? No, it's is more it's more like, no, no, not definitely not a publisher. Uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, friends. Mm. Uh, certain people whom I... Uh, whom I trust and who would not hide, uh, Criti you know, criticism from me. And, uh, you know, to different people, uh, I found already that it makes sense to give on different stages of yeah. readiness, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. So to, to some you can show parts and, you know, the, but this kind of routine, each, each writer, you know, finds... You know, forms for himself. And mm -hmm. there are some questions about publishing a book. Of course, um, the question, the main question is how mm -hmm. you publish a book. When that I can translate the language, the, the, the question also in in this sense that when do you when do you decide that you are ready that you can give it to a publisher? When and how is this dialogue with your publisher? Well, um, uh, when I start, I. I do not, I mean, I, I cannot say I don't like to write, but, but of course it's difficult to write. Mm. Because when you write, it's a, a matter of existence. Uh, and I love to edit. Mm. So I edit a lot. And when, you know, and I, usually I start uh, writing, uh, you know, I write it a part, you know, it could be even the ending or, you know, from, from, from the middle of the story, from somewhere. And then <clears throat> when next day or since I worked as a doctor also and I had, you know, breaks uh, in order to get into it, uh, again, I started to edit what was already written. So by the end, when the story is finished, it has been edited uh -huh. many times. Yeah. And then I keep editing. And then when I feel, you know, I start spoiling this, the thing, really, <laughs> yes. it's time to get to rid of yeah. it. Yeah, and that's it. And uh, also, at the end, I always put uh, footnotes, like 100 footnotes for, 200 footnotes for a 10-page story yeah. uh, for translators. Because when you write, it's important not to think how the story is translated into another languages, uh, specifically in English, because uh -huh. there is a danger of writing in so-called world literature. You know, world literature, some, you know, when people already have in mind how it would be in English, yeah. so uh, let's avoid this and that, that let's avoid ellipses, uh, let's avoid this game of words, because in English it would not work, uh, things like that. And, you know, in fact, then it looks like everybody writes you know the same the same book, you know, yeah. which is called yeah. you know even in English word they call it world literature. Yeah. So this is important not to th do that, of course. Uh, and uh, so, but at the end, um, I think of uh, well, I am checking first of all, you know, like quotes, uh, difficult words. Uh, difficult circumstances, something I refer to. So I put it into footnotes because uh, I, I insist that this is not a part of a text, uh -huh. of course. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, because for for readers, it is not that important to understand everything, every word in the in the book. Uh -huh. Because when we read some, you know, Latin American. Uh, novel and we understand this is food. Okay, what kind of food? Uh -huh. do you, we don't really care. Uh -huh. I mean, they, or this is kind of wind or a sand. Uh -huh. You know, they have different uh, words, uh, words, words for that. Uh, but as long as we, even reading Russian classics uh, with students, I understood 
that there were like you know, dozen words in Pushkin's Captain's Daughter, which I know yeah. almost by heart that I don't know. The but novel. I know that this is a part of, you know, weapon. This is or, uh, you know, uh, clothes, yeah. uh, old name for the clothes. But which one? It's not important. But for translator, of course, it is of important course, yes. to understand yeah. every word. Yeah. Otherwise, there would be funny, yeah. uh, funny things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, another question is, maybe I take some questions together. Mm -hmm. um, are you doing research for your books? It's, it's a little bit of a strange question because you, you told about how you, how you get inspiration, but is mm -hmm. there research involved? And, and, and the question which is connected with it, are you, have, do you have some notebook in your pockets and a pen yeah. to well, write something down? That well, I have a cell phone, like... Or a cell or phone, everywhere. for instance. <laughs> yeah, and there is... <laughs> <laughs> and there is, I dictate uh, very uh -huh, often. Okay. And I, I found that sometimes good thoughts uh, came to me uh, when I was driving. So while dri driving on a high speed, uh, when you are staying in traffic, it's never, it's, it's depressing and you know, I, <laughs> it cannot provoke any thinking. <laughs> but when you drive fast, yeah. uh, so yeah. I, I used to dictate, you know, on the cell phone. On, and then, you know, just so this is answering about a uh, notebook. Uh, it's, and it's a dangerous advice, of course. <laughs> it's no, but it's, yeah, car. why you turn it on and you okay. just uh, <laughs> you know, it's press forbidden. the button. It's forbidden. <laughs> Even to dictate. <laughs> yes, to, to, to ah. have it in your hand. Ah, OK. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> uh, so um, uh, as, uh, as for research, uh -huh. I used to, you know, interview people sometimes. Okay. So I, I, I made some interviews because... And it was about what? Well, I, I pretend to write about something that I know. Uh, it's, you know, some, some writers, great writers, just invented things like Kafka. Yeah. He, could, he didn't care about, yeah. you know, yeah. whether there is a bridge between New York and Boston. There <laughs> is a... In his novel, America, yes. there is yeah. a bridge yeah. between New York and Boston. And, uh, nobody... I mean, he didn't care. Uh, but for me, it's, you know, I don't uh -huh. do it this way. Uh, so uh, I try to, when I do not know something, I try to interview people. And sometime in this, for example, for this story uh, on the Spree, uh, it was about a uh, spy, a Soviet spy, mm -hmm. um, uh, who, well, it's not about the spy, but he was one of the characters, one of three. Uh, and I interviewed, I was lucky to interview a colonel of uh, reconnaissance, you know, so, sort of. Um, so it was not easy to get yeah. access to him. But he then, you know, spoke to me for like an hour and a half, but gave me very funny details yeah. of, 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 of their work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understood that these spies mainly, they do nothing at all, all their life. <laughs> they are just sitting somewhere. Uh, just working in a doing regular job, then something happens in you know ten years, something that they are not aware of at all, and they g get a command to you know come back quickly, and that's it, yeah. and their yeah. their work is done, <laughs> you know, <laughs> without even doing yeah. anything yeah. Uh, yeah. ever, and they are good in sports, good in languages, and very emotionally primitive people. <laughs> Yeah, very, <laughs> the less emotions, the better. <laughs> so, and he gave me, you know, some nice portraits of some people. So I used it for my work. Or, of course, I interviewed uh, a priest, because I have a story about a priest. I interviewed a man who knows all the buses in Moscow with all their stops, <laughs> with all many, many drivers. He's a pianist, but he has unique you know, memory and, yeah. and, and the unique way to use yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So since his childhood, and he is really unique, and he know also trolley buses, trams, but he despises them because there are not many of them and they are like, but buses, it's his, his passion. <laughs> so all stops, everything, and he just gave me fantastic details about 
these buses, when I ask him, tell me something moving or something funny about the bus, and he immediately told me stories. So I, I keep these uh, yeah, interviews. Yeah. Yeah. They are interesting by itself. So, you know, for, for many stories, I, I interview people. You listen to their stories. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. it's not their stories. I'm just story. asking, you know, is how is it, yeah. uh, whatever. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. To be a screenwriter, uh, yeah, screenwriter, a film writer. Uh -huh. uh, I, uh, for the story called uh, Objects in Mirror, I interviewed a screenwriter. So I try to... To, to, to be accurate yeah, in yeah, details. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned a couple of times music. Music is mm -hmm. very important for you. Mm -hmm. There are some questions about music. What mm -hmm. is, the, what is the, the, how can you compare music and literature? What is the, the comparison between those two? Why do you compare literature with music? Well, I wouldn't, Why is music so I wouldn't, yeah. Uh, well, they both, uh, well, music is more, much more informative, I would say, when you, uh, listen to some uh, readings during uh, the concert. You feel, you know, certain uh, that that music is much more intense and mm -hmm. and informative, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and or if you take uh, some pieces uh, with readings like uh, uh, "History of a Soldier" by Stravinsky or. Uh, uh, even um, uh, Saint-Saëns, uh, the uh, Carnival. Carnival of uh, Animals, yeah. when there is a re or Mendelssohn's, yeah. uh, the how do midnight, uh, mid yeah. uh, summer yeah. Uh, yeah. night, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, with readings, yeah. you feel all of a sudden like yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> and then music again, yeah. which is so. so I think that's music. why I try to write. You know, intense mm -hmm. to 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 condensed. You know, intense to put more information. And do you listen to music while you are writing? No, 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 no I don't. Two different things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, my family. Uh, my wife is a pianist. My daughter and her husband they play in string quartet very yeah. successfully. So I followed her career from yeah. the very beginning. Yeah. So uh, I, I even can say that formally I have more education in music than in literature because I never <laughs> had formal uh, formal education in yeah, literature. Yeah, yeah. And with music, I I was always interested in you know history of music, all this kind of yeah. things that she had at conserv at school yeah. than at conservatory. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah, you use also the word allegro, allegretto, and yeah. you, but with the story. Yeah. So you use musical terms to, to define stories. Well, it, I used it in, in our dialogue, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Another question. about We, we were talking about melancholy and, and the, 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 I said maybe something typical Russian, the, the heavy, the heavy mm -hmm. feelings. Um, there was uh, someone asked um, this heavy... Things is it is it something? If it is something Russian, how do you look at it now? When you are in Amsterdam, when you are in Western Europe, is it? Do you look at, at the same way in the same way at people here, um, or um, the, in the in the question was also this this phrase? Uh, do you recognize this melancholy also in the in your uh, in the Russian people? Not only in the literature, but in Russian, by Russian people. Is it something typical Russian, or is it some, something typical uh, for writers? This melancholy, melancholy, the heavy feelings, the dark side? <laughs> mm, well, I think that uh, it is Russian, of course. Uh, and in Russia, I don't know whether you have this um, understanding. Uh, Russians understand each other very quickly. Uh, and they understand not the best parts of uh, each other. And that's, uh, that makes life intense, you know, and for writer it's important, of yeah. course. Uh, and here I, I you know, to, to write about something you need at least, you know, semi-knowledge, something to be uh, curious, yeah. uh, something that surprises you. Uh, and here, of course, I understand too little. Uh, 
-hmm. I don't understand uh, subtleness, you know, and small differences, uh, even big differences. I mean, I, I, I look at people, I don't know who they are mm -hmm. uh, at all, like to which class they belong to, you know. Uh, I was in Madrid uh, with my publisher. We went from the restaurant and I said, I don't, you know, I look at this semi-naked uh, young women, uh, who they are, are they prostitutes? And he said, no, 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 they are foreigners. It's so obvious. <laughs> I said, why? I mean, we didn't listen to them. Because they, obviously, they go from one party to another. I mean, for him, it was very obvious that they are just parting, you know, yes. in the night in Madrid, you know, warm night. And they, so, but for me, it would be like, you know, it's I have no idea. Or recently in Frankfurt, I met, you know, a man who just, uh, who was semi, he was not probably homeless, but he spent much more time in the streets than other people. <laughs> and he <laughs> was with a very ugly, ugly yeah. dog, yeah. Uh, black dog. And all of a sudden he said, Adolf, Adolf, let's <laughs> go, you know, in Germany. <laughs> and we, and my son-in-law who, who lives there for a long time and who knows uh, German very well, you know, I tend to say he knows, he speaks German like Franz Beckenbauer, not like <laughs> Schiller or Goethe, of course, but and, uh, he, he, he is a uh, you know, gifted man, and uh, I said, yeah, and he smiled to us, this guy, after calling his dog, Adolf, he said, that's the way I call my dog, and what was it? I mean, was it, he, was he a Nazi, or was he anti- fascist or postmodern <laughs> joke. I mean, in Russia, I would understand it yeah. quite well. But, but there, I missed something. There yeah. were some yeah. details, uh, most important, yeah. that I, I just yeah. missed. It so, has something to do with language also. Yes, of yeah. course. Yeah. With language, with culture, with, uh, yeah, I was not raised here, so I, yeah, obviously. It's, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Another question. There are a lot of quotes in your uh, books. You say in a certain story, you say something about what is the meaning of uh, the triple A, mm -hmm. A, A, A. Yeah. Uh, in America, it is, a, uh, it is a, what is it? What is that? American Remember? Automobile Association. Yes, and in Russia, it is. Yeah, well, this is the guy who says that. He's a jerk, first of all. Hmm. Uh, he's a kind of funny, uh, not funny, but he's a miserable yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, secondly, <laughs> uh, I don't think there are many, many quotes. For for you, they seem to be much more than, I mean, the, it, it's all mainly from school program, mainly from, uh, from uh, uh, you know, Pushkin, Tolstoy, something very, very popular. So you mentioned them in the, in the, in the book at the end. Like yeah, it's translators. The translators, yeah, yeah. translators, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it doesn't seem, I try to avoid quotes when they are not necessary, but yeah. of course, it's something that is within Russian culture very strongly, yeah. so it's, uh, uh, it doesn't require erudition from my Russian readers. No, really. but it means that Russian people are more connected with this literature and have, have more quotes in their head, they have more... Maybe they read more, they know more about literature. We don't, um, we don't do that. Possibly, yes. Yeah, I was, I, uh, I, I asked, uh, well, mm, uh, you have great painters, you know, Germans have great composers, you know, each nation produces, you know, uh -huh. uh, so uh, something focused, uh, you know. So, of course, in Russia, literature is in the in the very focus of uh, uh, of uh, Russian life. So uh, I asked my students in Leiden whether they cried when they finished Captain's Daughter, because I always cry. Uh, well, I have my, you know, not cry, but I my eyes are wet. That's the novel and by they, Pushkin. Huh? The, the novel that Pushkin wrote. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's no, yeah, well, it's novella. But novella, it's, yes. It's yeah. not a... Yeah. It's shorter than mm -hmm. a novel, but uh, each time I know it almost by heart. Mm. But each time I, I finish it, I, I can help. 
Uh, and not only only that, some yeah. stories of Chekhov, like Bishop uh, or or Archbishop, another translation, or you know there are there are stories that make me cry yeah. uh, all this. And they said, no, we never never cried uh, <laughs> reading uh, literature. <laughs> I said, did you cry? Uh, I mean, watching movies? And they said, yes, of course. Yeah. You know, movies, of course, they did. So. Uh, for for them, the literature is too abstract. Like mm. I never cried uh, seeing a beautiful cathedral, you know. Mm. Uh, so only only literature and maybe music sometime, mm. but not in you know not as much as literature mm. can make me cry. But I can imagine a person would cry toward the uh, beautiful painting. Mm. I never did. So for, 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 for different cultures, it's uh, this different arts have different meanings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's look at another question. One of the questions interesting is, um, do you, uh, are you afraid sometimes when you write about certain persons or situations? Do you see danger? Do, are you afraid when you have written about something or somebody, someone, and that something can happen afterwards? Well, I, I, I uh, sometimes I'm afraid of offending my friends because I, when I'm using <laughs> quotes from their, you know, or episodes from their life, uh, that's the most dangerous thing yeah. because the person can be offended yeah. for for ye for, for <laughs> ages. And so I always call and ask, may I use this and that episode? And you know, I try to get a permission yeah. for that. And but and do they give the permission? Or <laughs> yeah, usually yeah. they do. Yeah. Then they are yeah. they are good friends. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure they are quite happy about. Uh, <laughs> that. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy uh, if someone yeah. would just you know make observations on me. Yeah. Yeah. But they, of course, I mean. To be, to become, uh, instead of being a, a subject, to become an object, it's yeah. it's painful. Yeah, yeah. yeah so course, I understand. Yeah. But that's that's how the, the writers, what the writers' work is. I mean, yeah. you have to. Yeah. Um, and did someone ever say, "Don't use me, don't use my name or, or my"? Yeah, character? the the uh, for example, the mm, landlord, the, the the owner of the house in Amsterdam. Uh, when I ca just came there, he's a very, very wealthy uh, person, uh -huh. uh, self-made and everything. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, and he, he, he. I asked him, "What are conditions of living? Can I smoke here? Can I do the, the, there?" You know, just asked yeah, about. Yeah. It. And he said, "Yeah, well, main condition: don't write about me." <laughs> he said, and he was very smart, <laughs> and not because he wanted to hide something. And and his girlfriend, she said. Uh, but maybe he would write something nice. Uh, <laughs> so, no, no, no. He said, "Please, nothing." <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "I thought, you know, he's very smart." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because mm -hmm. when you write, when you write about this character, mm -hmm. sometimes you are. It's not cynical, but it's the, there's a lot of uh, humor, but it's black humor mm -hmm. in it, how you depict persons. So I can yeah. imagine that they are not always happy when they. Yeah, I had a friend who is um, a musicologist, and he is Armenian, and he asked me, uh, "Please insert me in one of your stories. <laughs> you know, please do that." I said, "You, you, you are not." He's a very good, dear friend of mine, <laughs> and he said, "I asked you, you, you are not understanding what are you asking for." And I said, "No, no, no, please, please do that." And so I put him in the story of. Um, Renaissance man as a musicologist for me it would be e easy to I even uh, gave the you know location where he lives exactly <laughs> and even uh, since his hobby is to draw to to paint uh, I and it is very popular Armenian name Rafael so I called him Rafael you know there <laughs> in, in the story <laughs> so to make him even closer to to his real uh, yeah. So he was not happy. He no. was not happy. No. <laughs> 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 but it was too late. <laughs> there was a certain period that you were uh, a doctor and a writer at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
It's yeah, it's always been like yeah. that. It's as well it's since you were publishing yeah. Yeah. till now. How how could that? One of the questions was how could you manage that? Being a doctor, you you told about it a little bit already. Mm -hmm. That you were editing your texts between mm -hmm. two patients, yeah, yeah. and but how how can you combine that? Is it is it possible? Well, my doctoral work really uh, became smaller and smaller. It was a small town uh, in of N, and uh, we I brought very talented uh, physicians there, and I worked part time mm -hmm. only all these years. Last years I worked only part time, so it was not. Mm -hmm. difficult. Well, it affected medical work, uh, of course, because I always was like uh, afraid of, you know, if uh, the patient dies, uh, then that may be because I didn't read the last guidelines. Instead of, you know, thinking of, of a story, <laughs> I should read uh, last uh, things, but you know, so it 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 made it made doctoral work uncomfortable, really. But for writer, everything is, uh, of course, helpful. No. Yeah. And did you have did you have sometimes problems with patients? Because I can can imagine that you used some patients in your stuff. Well, the patients mostly were so-called common people. They would not read. Okay, and they, they would don't know. hardly. They, don't know they would hardly know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that I'm writing or whatever. They, they just, you know. So, well, but of course, again, uh, you have to be, you know, uh, a microbe and microscope at the same time. <laughs> it, it makes yeah. you, yeah. you know, like you are, and, you know, asking questions that you are not supposed to ask uh, the patient. You know, of course, this kind of things happened, and I tried to avoid it, but uh, it was sometimes it was unavoidable. <laughs> My experience is that doctors are also always very curious. They want to know everything. They, they put you questions that you think, well, why, why <laughs> does, yeah, yeah. does he ask me this question? Yeah. There's nothing to well, do with my disease, but he has to know it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, so it you happened, do it also. It happened, yeah. <laughs> Just what is the sense of this tattoo, for example? <laughs> what does it make? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's see, what do we have else? Uh, about translations. Um, you are translated, translated in, in many languages. Mm -hmm. uh, are you involved in, in translations for the language that you know? Well, the only language I know is English. You can... Uh, so I read uh, the translations and uh, we... German we is not your... Very, not. No. Well, I... Uh, and German translators, well, it depends on people. They, they were really difficult. Uh -huh. all, yes. all of them were Fair, difficult. Yes. <laughs> I know. Uh, and I don't have right now, you know, a translator, German translator, uh -huh. whom I would just easily uh, address <laughs> <laughs> something. But uh, English translator, translators, they, you know, I have two of them. Well, there were more, but the two of them who translated most of my works, and we became very good friends, really. Uh, just you know, more than author-translator uh, yes, relations. Yes. So, uh, uh, but I'm involved also somehow in with others, with the Spanish, Catalan mm -hmm. translators, we became good friends, really. Yeah. And uh, they ask questions they, you know, when they do not understand. French translator, she, she calls me and said, please rephrase that. Just let's just talk a little bit uh -huh. about that, you know, wh what kind of... Uh, so, you know, this kind of... It's, it's, it's useful. Uh -huh. Uh, plus, I told you about this numerous footnotes, yes, footnotes so they yes. are yeah. always sure that, uh, um, because I, I say, okay, this is not a proverb, it looks like proverb, but mm. I, I invented it, mm. or this is a proverb, but I changed it. Uh, so this, you have to look at the dictionary, you yes. know, phraseologic dictionary yeah. for that. This is from New Testament, this is from yeah. Tolstoy, this is yeah, from... So for them, it's, of yeah. course, very, very uh, helpful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Another question, an interesting question, is um, what is your biggest dream as a writer? Uh, the, the, the other question is, do you have something on your writing writer's bucket list 
that you, that you want to achieve. I don't look at it like this. I never thought of it. Well, I just want to write, uh, to keep writing, I mean, to write something mm. good. But I seriously, it's not that yeah. I, yeah. I dream that I should achieve Booker Prize or, <laughs> you know, something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, I would love to get, <laughs> you know, as many prizes as possible. Yes. But, yeah. uh, but it's not that I really, or, or say, uh, there is an authority that, you know, would... There are no such authorities, unfortunately. Someone who, you know, if someone prays you... Like, like for Chekhov, it was when Tolstoy said, you know, uh, something good about his uh -huh. story. You uh -huh. know, the darling, yes. he was quite happy, you know. He was a very modest person, so he uh -huh. took his glasses and said, well, but there are some typos there, he said, you know, <laughs> things like that. But yeah. he was, of course, happy. And he said, it seems there are some, I, I think there are some, some typos, he said. <laughs> 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 which writer could say that to you? Which, which, when no, you that's, very that's the problem, that in nowadays, you know, it's, nowadays I don't, I don't have you this don't. kind of, well, I, of course, there are, there are people whom my friend, you know, Sergei Ganlevsky, who is a very good poet, or uh, some others, I would be happy to, Tsvitkov, who, another poet who, this is a very good time for, for poetry in Russia. Uh -huh. uh, we have very good poets, uh -huh. actually. Uh, well, if they praise me somehow, I would be very glad, but it's not that this is a dream. Uh -huh. They did, actually. Uh -huh. Yes tell me nice things, so it's not that... Yeah. Mm. Could, could a dream be also that you hope that as many people as possible in Russia can read your books? I don't know how it's, how it's the situation now with... with no, they can books. read it. The internet is still yes. working, so yeah. everything is in, on the internet. Okay. Uh, I put all my texts in Russian on the internet, so if... Okay. Uh, because people do not buy books, they steal them. Uh, and they, <laughs> no, you can find almost everything. So, and sometimes in a very poorly uh, way yeah. stolen. Yeah. Uh, so I decided in order to avoid all this uh, questionable, you know, uh, versions, uh, old versions, uh, versions yeah, yeah. with some paragraph, m paragraphs missing because they are, uh, stealing it and doing it fast, yeah. you know, yeah. too fast. Yeah. <laughs> so I just put old versions and even my reading, yeah. uh, readings of my stories onto my website, which is maxim-osipov.ru, okay. and it's <laughs> you know, still there. And do you get reactions from le readers in Russia or Russian mm, readers? Not very, very many. Uh, it's uh, people, for some reason, uh, it's, uh, they are, you know, well, unexpectedly, you could find that, yeah, you was, somebody read this story, but it's not, people are not opened, mm -hmm. and uh, so they, not really, not many. There's one interesting question. Well, also. well, actually, uh, we have no... Uh, for you to understand, we have no social institutions. Uh -huh. We don't have uh, places like this in Russia. Everything is under, it's, everything is rotten, spoiled, you know, Academy of Science or uh, whatever. So there are no institutions at all. So the only institution we have is Facebook. Yeah. Uh, it seems funny, but, but everything important happens yeah. on Facebook yeah. because it's uh, it's the only thing where we can, you know, speak. Uh, these days, even you cannot speak on Facebook openly, yeah. being in Russia about certain things. Yeah. Uh, but uh, about literature, about whatever, you know, it's it's Facebook. Uh -huh. That's it. In Soviet time, there was an underground culture. Does it exist? Or could it exist now also? R literally well, it, underground. Well, li for literature, it, it is not. It has not yet been necessary mm. because literature uh, could exist somehow. It was independent from the state. Mm. Uh, <coughs> but print runs were very small. Mm. 
everything was on the internet. There were no institutions of, you know, critics, mm. uh, meetings in bookstores, uh, whatever, something that, that exists here. So you are very lucky mm. to have this, mm -hmm. you know, the whole, the whole system uh, built here. I think these are the most important questions. I have another question, which is not on the, on the list, I think. Just check. Oh, there's one, one more question um, about America. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you, um, um, you have a story that is located in America. Yeah, uh, a few stories, yeah. actually. You have worked in America as a... Um, yeah, I worked for a year as a doctor. As a doctor, yeah. Yeah, I was a fellow. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> tot ziens. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ze moeten de trein halen. I was a I, I was a research fellow in 91, yeah. 92. I was yeah. very young. I was 27. Uh, and then I visited America very, very often. Uh -huh. uh, I had this funny moonlighting job uh, described in my story, The Gypsy. Uh -huh. uh, and also I had some uh, stories. Uh, Cape Cod uh -huh. is about two Russian immigrants in America and uh, also figures on the plane. Here it calls Matvey, Matvey Ivanov uh -huh. in, the, in the Dutch version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the questions was, could you ever live in America? Could you emigrate to America and live there? Uh, would it be possible? Well, I, I didn't know it would be possible for me to immigrate here. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I, I think... American society is uh, not the healthiest, mm. I would say, in the world, mm. to put it mildly. Yeah. So, especially now, yeah. when I visited it after a certain, you know, I, I haven't been there for six years, and then I, or five years, and I visited it in 2019, and I was surprised how much uh, it changed, mm. in not in a good way, mm. really. And it was Trump, a uh, period when Trump was uh, president. But it, of course, it, he was democratically elected, so it was not just mm. you know, uh, an earthquake or something. It, so probably not. But I don't want to be very critical to America when my own country is in a such a you know, terrible fascist you know, really uh, state. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, who am I to criticize America? Well, I prefer Europe, let's say. You prefer Europe? Yes. Yeah. If you could choose Russia or Europe or America, what would you yeah, choose? Yeah, I, I made my choice. Yeah. You made your choice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think that literature is capable to change something? Yes, I think literature is capable to uh -huh. change okay. something, yeah. <laughs> you know, not <laughs> not too much maybe, yeah. but uh, I had an example in my life when literature changed a lot, The my own town, because my story, my first story, well, essay, very, very short, made such a scandal that uh, <laughs> uh, that the uh, the whole administration of the city was fired. Uh, at the <laughs> end, there was a big battle. Uh, <laughs> it, it was in 2008. These days, I would be put in prison <laughs> without any, uh, you know. Uh, but at that time, yeah, it changed. It changed a lot. So this this may happen. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, uh, but uh, it's uh, uh, well, it's like like. Like every, you know, art, it it acts indirectly. Uh, so you, you know, yeah. That's I cannot be more more specific. Is it possible that it. by reading, your people are looking in another way to the world? That that reading can change. I think yeah. Well, it's, it's well, it's possible. We cannot make an experiment. What? Uh. Uh, would I be if I didn't read War and Peace uh -huh. or, uh -huh. you know, uh, Yevgeny Onegin or uh -huh. something uh -huh. else. Uh, so we cannot, but I'm quite sure I would be, you know, a different person somehow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
I, I heard a lot of times that people say that we, we, we have to... Is it possible to look into the head of Putin? What is, what is he thinking? What is happening there? If we, maybe if we should see what's happening there, then we could act or do something or do the right thing or know what is the, what, what is the truth. Well, I think, I think uh, it's, uh, uh, there are certain people who understand him much better than Europeans. For example, Erdogan. Erdogan can look in his head, you know, because he's a gangster too. Yes. And he understands him quite well. Yes. So I don't think you will find much in, in his head. No. <laughs> I think he is uh, a very meek, very mediocre person uh, who is, you know, he's KGB mm. person who is trained to see uh the uh the the uh you know dark bad you know sides of of human beings so he would very quickly looking at the person understand okay he loves money and this one loves mm. you know uh, young boys and this one is uh, and to corrupt them mm. so that that's his only skill he has really. He 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 has never been uh, like Hitler, a popular politician, mm -hmm. you know, a public politician. He has never elect, win ever any el elections mm -hmm. uh, or or uh, having any debates or whatever. So he's a very meek uh, meek person with this type of skills, and he. Uh, when people say, you know, these days about imperialistic nature of Russian literature, uh, of course, I mean, that's true, but partially, not, mm, it, it shouldn't be applied to all, or, uh, to all literature, but is, is British literature not imperialistic mm -hmm. or what? Uh, it's uh, Putin uh, unleashed this war in, in Ukraine not because he read too many Russian books, believe me, uh, too many imperialistic literature. He, he read nothing. Okay, formally he, he mm. read something, mm. uh, you know, at, at school or something, but he never let it into his, you know, heart. Mm. Uh, and uh, but he read or heard some theories like, like many Russian people he do not have uh, like many like many you know uh, northern uh, small nations you know like Eskimos they don't have enzyme uh, against alcohol you know so they can become alcoholics <laughs> much faster yeah. than uh, uh, you know uh, people from the south uh, they uh, Russians do not have um, uh, immunity toward ideas. Yeah. So uh, somebody brought him to his, you know, attention the idea of Russian world, yeah. you know, yeah. and how how wonderful would it be to, you know, and then and he he made you know a lot of mistakes uh, after that. Uh, terrible mistakes, you know, he underestimated Ukrainians, Ukrainian army, Ukrainian president, overestimated Russian army, he despised the West, thought, you know, West is weak, and, you know, West showed some weakness, because during Crimea, etc., uh, they really didn't uh, act, uh, you know, strong enough, whatever, so he thought they would, and so he, he just believed in some in some rubbish really I don't want to end with a pessimistic <laughs> pessimistic words do you, in your work we have had all the questions but I have one more question you are very pessimistic in, in a way but there are also unexpected optimistic moments mm -hmm. in, in your stories mm -hmm. at a certain moment there is hope there is something yeah. there's a light um, so it's not, it's not you. You're not looking at a completely dark future. There is something. Yes. To live for. Well, every every wars come, come to the end. I would yeah. tell the very <laughs> simple thing, you know. And this one is no exception. And uh, you know, uh, I, I I really hope that uh, it will end, and we will 
uh, and we will we will enjoy much better times. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank Does you very it, much for this. Is uh, it consoling? Uh, yes, well, yeah. <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> not not hundred <laughs> <laughs> well. percent. But your, it, I can advise uh, all of you read these books. Read uh, his books; it's uh, really fantastic. And uh, well, thank uh, you very much. Yes, absolutely. You're most kind. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, ik dank ook uh, Bout de Begeerte die voor de livestream heeft gezorgd vanavond. Uh, ik heb nog een paar mededelingen. Um, de volgende keer uh, zal Els Moors er zijn, want zij lag geveld met uh, corona vandaag. Daarom heb ik haar vervangen op 21 december, woensdagavond. Um, Els Moors, schrijfster, kent u ongetwijfeld en voormalig dichter des Vaderlands. En ik wil u ook nog melden dat morgenavond, hier op dezezelfde plaats, maar dan zit in deze stoel mijn goede vriend Peter Vermeers... Um, is er een happening van PEN, PEN Vlaanderen, uh, met het programma Free the World. En dat is, um, dan zal uh, um, Maximus Sipov opnieuw hier zijn en zal uh, gepraat worden vanuit een ander perspectief, op een andere manier. Dus als u zin hebt, dan bent u daar van harte op uitgenodigd. Camille Michels zal ook erbij zijn, zal voorlezen. Uh, het wordt ook, het ook een fantastische avond. Dank voor uw komst, dank voor uw vragen. Uh, en ik herhaal nogmaals, lees het werk van uh, Maxime Ossipov. Het is fantastisch, fantastisch dat u ook op een prachtige manier vertaalt. Trouwens, dat moet ook gezegd worden. Vertalers worden veel te weinig in het zonnezicht. Your translation is, is very interesting also. Yeah, so we is. have to say, because translators are underestimated. It's, very, it's really a, mm. a good uh, translation. Dat was alles wat ik moest zeggen. Dank voor uw komst. Goede reis naar huis. Thank you, Maxime. For thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>